In this video, we investigate the options available within the copper pore. For simplicity, we have a small copper pore area enclosing two pins. The top pin will be connected to the copper pore, and the other pin within the copper pore will be isolated from the poured copper. To recap, the isolated pin isolation gap is defined within the design technology under the spacings tab as a setting in the shapes to pad box. The pad connected to the copper pore has its default settings defined in the rules tab. These values are common to the power plane. However, they can be customized for each copper pore area as we will illustrate later. Here we have a 0.254 mm isolation gap and spoke width and also a request for four spokes. The minimum spokes defines the number of spokes we require for the pore to be considered successful. We now illustrate the copper pore with these default settings. The isolation gap provides a thermal break to the large poured copper area, allowing good soldering to be achieved without excessive heat transfer to the copper pore. The spoke widths allow a suitable low impedance connection to the copper pore area. It is your design choice to decide what values you require. As you will observe, by highlighting a single spoke, it consists of a track with rounded ends. The reason we have a minimum spoke setting is that the ends of the spoke will not be allowed to encroach into a defined isolation or clearance gap. If it does, it will be omitted from the pad. We now illustrate how the default settings for a copper pore may be overridden. The pore is cleared and we right click on the pore area and select properties. Select the override design level thermals. And as we are using through hole pads, select this from the pull down menu. As you observe, we can also change the default values for the surface mount pads and fires. Having selected through hole pads, we now select Override Default and we can now edit any of the entries to our design requirements. We also have the option to change the spokes preference. These are defined in Help. The most commonly used are the top five. But please note the last listed, Adjacent, is not implemented and will be removed from the list in a future release. There are two types of spokes available. These are orthogonal, which align with the X, Y axis, and angled, which are at 45 degrees to the axis. For each type, each has another option. Prefer orthogonal spokes and prefer angled spokes. We will now illustrate how you can benefit from these. First, we increase the spoke width. As you observe from the highlighted spoke, this just meets the design technology spacing rule and does not encroach on the associated area of the next pad. What if it had? We now illustrate this case by increasing the spoke width. The lower spoke would have encroached into the clearance area and has been omitted. This is still a correct result as it meets our requirement of a minimum of one spoke. Can this be improved? Yes, you can use smaller width spokes as you saw previously, but you can also use one of the other options, prefer orthogonal spokes. This option changes the decision situation from keeping orthogonal spokes and reducing the number of spokes to attempting orthogonal spokes at the required number and if not successful, changing to angled spokes. This example illustrates the result. We now illustrate simply changing the isolation gap, which as you can see only changes the thermal pads connected to the copper pore. As a reminder, if you wish the isolated pad in the copper pore to have a larger isolation gap, this is achieved by changing the spacing defined in the design technology in the shape to pad cell. 
This copper pore illustrates the pad to copper clearances. It also shows the behavior of preferred orthogonal spokes. In this case, it could not achieve four spokes in either orthogonal or angle options and made three orthogonal spokes. Remember, the copper pore outline is by default the same color as the copper layer, but it is not actual copper track. Use the color settings as shown if you wish to change this to avoid confusion.